A very good morning, students. I hope all of you are doing well. Today, we shall discuss the final part of the first unit of business policy and strategy. So after the discussion today, we shall complete the first unit of business policy and strategy. My next task would be to discuss any one of the subject in your marketing specialization paper. So far as distribution of responsibility is concerned, I'm supposed to take up the subject retail management. The subject uh, distribution and supply chain management would be taken up by Manisha Madam. So my next task would be to discuss the first unit of retail management that I'll do in the due course of time, but that would be relevant only to the marketing students. The second unit of business policy and strategy would be taken up by Nilanjan sir. So I have duly supplied all the notes related to the first unit in your WhatsApp group. I have also uploaded video in YouTube and shared the link of the video in your WhatsApp group that contains the discussion of the notes. So please listen to the discussion also. Uh, it should not happen that you just read the notes and avoid listening to the discussion because listening to the discussion would facilitate your understanding regarding the notes. And I'm quite certain that you have gone through the notes. You have also listened to the discussion. So if you remember in the last class, we have discussed the concept of company mission. We have discussed the importance of company mission. And we have also attempted to distinguish between mission and vision of a company. Today's discussion is about the steps involved in the formulation of company mission. We will discuss Peter Drucker's views on performance and how he prioritized performance within an organization. We will also discuss Warren Bennis' views on leadership. Warren Bennis is a famous economist who died in the last decade. And his views on leadership has played a significant role in changing the concepts of leadership to a great extent. And his views are also used in management. So our first part of the discussion is about formulation of company mission. Of course, you can understand that the formulation of company mission is not a simple task. It would stem in the minds of the decision maker and it would be articulated in the form of a statement. But the state mission statement must be precise. It should not contain any ambiguities. Along with that, it should reconcile with the nature of the business and it should cater to the needs of the people whom the company is looking to serve. Based on this preliminary idea, I'm sharing the screen with you. Please pay attention. So there we go. Just a minute, I would try to enlarge the screen for you. So as I have told you, today our discussion would be, uh, the first part of the discussion would deal with steps for in the formulation of a mission statement. Then Drucker's view on performance. Peter Drucker is a famous management theorist. And then leadership and visioning, uh, the views of Warren Barris on leadership. So organizational mission, of course, encompasses the broad aims of the organization. And it defines what the organization tries to achieve. Therefore, the process of defining a mission for any organization can be best understood by thinking about its inception. Inception means that why for an organization is established. The organization, any organization would have its core competence. Core competence would distinguish one organization from the other. And it would also have a particular line of, uh, or particular line of business. The line of business would also distinguish one organization from the other. And it would also, uh, you know, provide the competitive advantage for the business. So from the inception itself, we can understand what possibly could be the company mission. Truly speaking, an organization's mission lie in the basic philosophy of those who has created and managed the organization. So I have told you that those who were there in the inception of the organization, those who created the organization, their philosophy would play a great role in formulation of the company mission. So the general steps which are involved in the formulation of the company mission is given in the following slides. So there you go. I have interlinked three steps. The first step is key decision makers philosophy and vision. So as I have told you that the uh, decision makers philosophy and vision would play a great role in the formulation of company mission in fact the mission stems in the minds of the uh, decision maker in the first hand and then it gets articulated in the form of a statement so the first part as i have told you it is the key decision makers philosophy and vision the philosophy of a person would consist about some integrated set of assumptions and beliefs about the way things are the purpose of activities and the way these should be so the philosophy of a person has its origin in two premises. Now here are the two premises that we are basically referring to. Uh, it has a linkage in terms of business also. So the, the two premises are fact premises and value premises. 
fact premises are basically the descriptive views of what the how the world is behaving now when you uh, talk about the descript descriptive views you need to collect some evidence regarding that so say for example you have collected the evidence and based on the evidence you now have a view regarding how the world or how the uh, you know society or what would be the needs of the customers in that sense from a company's point of view so these are the fact premises fact premises of course I, as you can understand would depend upon the collection of the facts and how to, and what the fact reveals now value premises would basically be about the desirability of certain goals and activities in the minds of the decision makers so every person has a philosophy in some form or the other which defines what one wants what one uh, wants to achieve and uh, how he is behaving so vision is a perception of the of the kind of environment a person desires to create within a broad time horizon and the underlying conditions for the actualization of the perception as i have told you in the last class also that vision is a long term dream within a particular time horizon that is basically long term in nature uh, the company wants to achieve somewhere now this vision would drive the actions of the employees within the organization towards that particular vision so basically the vision of a company would provide a direction to the company and a vision uh, then would specify the steps also that should be taken to achieve the vision then comes organizational philosophy and vision now you must understand that organizational philosophy and vision is not independent of the decision makers philosophy because the decision makers philosophy uh, is ultimately getting uh, manifested in the organizational philosophy and vision so like a person an organization also has a vision and philosophy these philosophy and vision are derived from the philosophy and vision of the key decision maker as i have told you in fact a person who wants to achieve things which he values most in many cases he cannot achieve this alone because of many of the limit because of numerous limitations for example a, a, a person wants to achieve something but because of the financial constraints he is not able to achieve it what best he can do to achieve it uh, he can join hands with someone else or he can form an organization so in order to overcome the limitations a person forms an organization so at the initial stage of the organization decision making tends to be centralized that means decision making lies in the hands of a single person but when the size of the organization gets bigger then at that point of time it uh, the, the organization is uh, compelled to decentralize it or the organization needs to set up different units different units would have different uh, you know managers and every manager would have their own way of thinking but the core values of the core uh, philosophy of the organization would depend upon the philosophy of the decision maker the decision maker who were there in the during the inception of the company then as i have told you that it gets translated into a organizational mission now the organizational mission as probably if you remember in the last class it should serve the needs of the people or it should basically relate to the needs of the people whom the whom the organization is serving for example first of all the mission statement can contain uh, th these elements the eight elements that have or the seven elements that i have listed over here the products and services offered by the organization can provide benefits at least equal to the price now this could be the mission of the so the mission of the company would basically uh, facilitate the company to uh, you know uh, design their actions to design their strategies now if the mission uh, contains this particular element the first element that is products and services offered by the organization should uh, be equal to the uh, at least equal to the price of the products the benefits that the uh, that the customers receive from the products and services now if the first element is contained in the mission then the company's actions should be directed in providing the products uh, so that the customers does not have a complaint regarding the price or the or the customers are not dissatisfied regarding the price or they do, should not feel that they have paid more for a particular product now the products and services can also satisfy the customers and not adequately served by others presently not adequately served by others presently means that the other competitors in the society are not able to serve the customers so a particular company has identified the loopholes and the particular company wants to fill up so the technology used in producing the products and services will be cost and quality competitive so all these elements the six, seven elements that i have mentioned over here could be contained in the mission statement it can happen that the mission statement contains more than one elements it is said that at the initial stage the above elements would go into the mission statement but as the company uh, grows and as there are competitive forces the company may need a redefinition of the mission statement but 
here we have basically referred to the three steps, the three steps that are involved in the preliminary formulation of the organizational mission. As I have, probably, if, if you remember in the last class, I have mentioned that organizational mission is not static. It keeps on changing with the changing environment. Vision is something that remains constant, but organizational mission can change. So here also, as it is mentioned over here, that because of the competitive forces within, uh, and because uh, the company has grown, so with the passage of time, with the graduation of time, the organizational mission also needs some re may also need some redefinition. Now, Peter Drucker views on performance. He, uh, Peter Drucker has been a famous management theorist. His views on performance is quite concrete and he has not given any superficial views. He said that performance is synonymous to results. Now he proclaimed that management is a practice. Its essence is not in doing, uh, so, sorry, its essence is not in knowing, but in doing what a manager does. So the only authority of management is performance. So he has prioritized performance within an organization. He suggested that when it comes to hiring and promoting of employees, instead of looking at the potential, you should look at what he has been doing over a period of time. So two fundamental management tools, which he had basically classified as uh, performance area, two performance area, one is business theory and another is innovation. Now Drucker suggests that organization needs to set the objectives based on the evaluation of the outer environment, as well as the goals of the competencies within the organization. Now, what basically business theory is, uh, I will we will discuss it in the next slide thoroughly, but let me tell you that business theory is about the ways the organization has decided to go, up, uh, you know, conduct the business. So, and the organization will be able to outline the expected performance and the results based on the organizational objectives. Now, it is said that business theory is uh, the essence for, uh, you know, strategic planning within an organization. So, while uh, raising, uh, I mean, while defining the concept of theory of business, uh, Drucker has raised three questions that every organization should ask itself. What is the nature of business? Who are the customers? And what are the core, core values of the customers? Now, the thinking and the answers which are derived by the organization should form the essence of the questions. The answers will help the organization in constructing appropriate strategy. The most important aspects of business strategy is plan out the strategic business moves that will help in the attainment of the performance goals while distributing the resources, including the talents within an organization for the business moves. Now, the Drucker has emphasized that all products and services, working processes, and marketing strategy have to be reviewed periodically so as to find out which comp components are outdated and invalid. Now, along with discussing the business theory concept, he has also mentioned that innovation is another important aspect of performance. That means an organization cannot go on forever with the same business theory. The organization needs to review whether the business theory is contemporary to the, the changing environment. If uh, the organization finds that the business theory needs to be changed, then they should innovate. Or you can say that uh, there should be a revision of the business theory. Now, it is said that organization needs to innovate from time to time, even when the current business theory is workable. Now, even with the current business theory, the organization needs to, uh, you know, innovate. An organization only has two obligations. This is a famous statement made by Peter Drucker. He said that there are only two functions within an organization. One is marketing and one is innovation. I mean, these two, according to him, it is said that these two functions within the organizations are the only two functions that brings revenue. All the others bring or, or, or all the others are related to cost. So building a business theory for the organization is a fundamental marketing task. Business theory assists the company in exploring the need of the customers. Thus, any amendment of the business theory is the utmost innovation of the enterprise also. So from this angle, we now know that innovation should be treated as active marketing because once a company uh, innovates, then it means that it has brought about a change in the business theory also. Even with the uh, you know, uh, prevailing business theory, the company can innovate. Now, without innovation, the company cannot proceed or progress. The, for the company to progress, it needs to bring about innovations within the company's products and services. So although we are situated in an era where the business theory are needed to be modified uh, you know, constantly. Nevertheless, it gives a chance to enter the new business sectors and new markets. So today, the entry and the exit of companies from the market has become very easy. Earlier, at one point of time, when there was, uh, you know, impositions of some rules and regulations, licensing system, at that point of time, company would th think twice, or anyone would think twice to set up a company. 
now the paths have been very simple the paths have become uh, clearer uh, because uh, you know many uh, organizations have uh, set up in the last uh, two or three decades because of the uh, facilities they derive from liberalization so the era is pushed forward by innovation today is the era where the newcomers may surpass the old timers newcomers that means those who are coming up with new innovations they can surpass the old timers now let us understand Uh, the visioning and leadership concept that the views that has been provided by Warren Bennis. As I have told you that Warren Bennis is a famous economist who died in the last decade. His views on leadership has uh, transformed the concept of leadership and his views on leadership has, uh, you know, provided a new uh, perspective regarding how leadership is used in the context of management. Now, visioning and leadership may be defined as the process of forming a mental image in order to set goals, make plans, and solve, solve problems that guide the organization into the future. Thus, it is the first step in goal setting. So it is basically said that visioning and leadership would be the first step in goal setting. Without these two elements, goal cannot be set. While mission statement guides the organization in day-to-day -day operations. Now, mission statement, of course, you understand or you know that mission statement is something that will guide the organization for in daily operations. But vision statement would provide an essence for the direction in the long run. Now, Warren Bannis and Bart Nenis has said that leaders articulate and define what has pre previously remained implicit and unseen. Something which had remained dormant at one point of time is being defined by the leaders. They will invent images, metaphors, and models uh, that provide a focus for a new attention. By so doing, they consolidate a change, challenge or challenge the prevailing wisdom. They would basically challenge the prevailing status quo and they would uh, want to change the wisdom that prevails in the market. They would bring about a breakthrough in the market. In short, an essential feature of leadership is the capacity to influence and organize meaning for the members of the organization. In addition, Benis and uh, Nanos describe leaders as creating dangerously. Creating dangerously means that, as I have told you, that they will break through. Whatever is prevailing in the uh, organization, they would want to bring about a transformation. So it is said that they change the basic metabolism of the organization. Now, Warren Bannis insights into the characteristics that mark real leaders has added a great deal to the modern management thought and methods. As I have told you, that Warren Bannis has been a significant contributor to the modern uh, management thoughts and models. Now, according to Bannis theory, true leaders understand themselves. They know what are their weak, uh, strengths and weakness, possess both a vision and the ability to translate that vision to their teams and are able to establish an environment of trust. So if there is a true leader in the organization, then the followers would automatically trust him. It should not happen by coercion. The leaders need not impose uh, you know, upon the members of the organization or the followers. Uh, the uh, trust for the leader among the followers come very voluntarily. So this is what Varen Van is views on leadership. He has given extended and, and elaborate views on leadership. He has also provided 13 points by which leaders can be distinguished from managers in the organization but we shall not go to the details of it uh, the the first unit uh, just says that we need to understand the views of Warren Bennis so this is how we have completed the first unit and our next as I have told you our next task would be to discuss the first unit of retail management that I'll do in the due course of time, but that would only be relevant to the uh, marketing specialization students. So before that, I would expect that you complete the preparation of the first unit of uh, business policy and strategy. So uh, before the next class and till we meet, have a very good time. Uh, goodbye to all my beloved students. Thank you.